Welcome to our uh, skirmish ready in action. And even though we're not firing real cannonball or case shot, it can have quite a concussive force. So please move to your right. Okay, as our skirmish is in uh, action here, you can see to our right some Federal Cavalry Patrol that have obviously wandered into a Confederate camp. Whether they knew it was here or not, they certainly have found it. And they are coming dangerously close to being captured. <laughs> the skirmishers that you see on the Confederate side are men of the 57th Virginia being commanded by Sergeant Ed Zakowski. What you're actually viewing is actually what a absolute real army would do. They, they were under fire of any sort. Instead of sending their entire troops out, they would send out what would be known as the skirmish line, is what you see, so that they could probe the other side and see exactly what they're fighting. So obviously this is a slight cavalry patrol. could be absolutely nothing. And the camp is in absolutely no danger. But nonetheless, the Confederates have their gun in place and ready just in case their camp could be attacked. Thing to be had or happening quite honestly, perhaps it was only just the Yankee patrol foraging around or just probing to see where the Confederate side actually begins. Yeah, and the 30th Virginia, who are also still in camp, but I have a feeling we're going to see them probably very soon. The skirmishers will probably move forward just to make sure that there isn't anything along that tree line. It wasn't just the Yankee Patrol. Apparently, a Union uh, company has come out. The Union company would be that of the Long Island based 67th New York that actually hailed from the end of Long Island during the war. The bugle call, of course, is instructing the men exactly how to move and maneuver. 57th Virginia is beginning to break off, as now it looks like there's obviously going to be some sort of fight that's actually going to entail here. The 67th New York is going into their skirmish formation. And the cavalry makes another reappearance. So this wasn't just a slight piece of happenstance, ladies and gentlemen. The urgency in the air is greater. Would be Colonel Frank Ruiz of the 14th Brooklyn, commonly known by their foes as the Red Legs. What you see Captain Platt's doing is firing by files from the right. That extends his line of fire so that each man fires in time successively. As his men reload, they reload tend to be quickly than one large volley fire. Since he's actually fighting against skirmishers, firing one huge volley fire would be... I think it's effective.
This way, each one of his men can take particular aim at the target of choice. The Federal Skirmishers of the 67th New York are now moving and moving up. We also see to their slight rear more of the red-legged devils. They seem to be coming up and popping out of everywhere. Apparently, Colonel Ruiz is not asleep either. tells me that Captain Platt is going to be John joined by the 9th Virginia very quickly. Fire, as you can see, it was the standard Napoleonic tactic of the time, massing many men with as many rifles as you could get against your opponent. Now, Colonel Ruiz is beginning to answer fire volley by fire volley. As you can see, trying to get wounded off the field was not an easy task during the middle of a firefight. Are moving forward. The accuracy of the average war between the states long arm was roughly about 400 yards. The Confederates are pressing forward. The Virginia to the extreme close side of the house, then the 57th Virginia in the middle. And the 30th in reserve about to come online. Under Captain. This is not the first time the men of Virginia and the men of Brooklyn have met on the field of fire. The men you see on the federal side wearing the green uniforms are that of the Bretagne sharpshooter considered camouflage uniforms were ever used in the United States Army. The uniforms are, are made of a curtain to blend in with the tree line, and they do not get black buttons. Their buttons were actually made of a black, what was known as gutta percha, which is a type of rubber plastic that was made at the time. Young Lieutenant Uruz moves his men backward as they feel that the pressure from the Confederate moving top is coming ever closer. advance too far, there may be more Yankees lurking somewhere 
through that flank to, to come in behind them. But through the skill of Captain Hewitt, guiding the entire Confederate line to a certain victory, or maybe a certain defeat. Still not yet completely been completely Lieutenant Ruiz is now pressing toward the The red legged devils are going to press forward once more. Young Lieutenant Ruiz is moving off his red legs. The 9th Virginia Crest is forward. Confederates move forward, inching ever closer. The Federals not moving off from their halted position either. Seems that Captain Hugh is there. Captain Platt is there. Sergeant Sutaski's dead. That are either killed outright or wounded. Whole units could be maneuvered by sergeants or corporals, as is the case is now. A final goodbye. And Jackson's flying artillery. Apparently the Union have had enough of the day. The Virginians are holding their field, but not without a terrible cost. The sound of retreat. The final message from the Virginians. Virginians will now move off and ready themselves by Major Bordelin's gun. And that would conclude our skirmish for this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen.